I'm Phil Salmoni, a technical consultant for Altium, and welcome to this video on PCB layer stackup and controlled impedance traces and routing in Altium Designer. I'm going to be guiding you through how to get PCB stackup information from your manufacturer and then import that into Altium Designer using Altium Designer's layer stack manager. Once we've done that, we can then move over to calculating controlled impedance trace widths, spacing, and so forth using Altium Designer's inbuilt field solver tool. So really useful features and features I use in pretty much every board design. If you'd like to give Altium Designer a try for yourself, make sure to check out the link in the description below to get a free trial of Altium Designer. Let's get started. All right, let's start off with layer stack up and how we can get that information from a manufacturer. Keep in mind that this video is in no way affiliated with any of these manufacturers I'm showing you. These are just manufacturers I happen to be familiar with and have used in the past. One for Europe, one for Asia, and one for the US. So we can get an overview and see that the information provided is usually pretty similar and easy to find. First of all, let's look at Euro circuits. And if we're looking at controlled impedance, typically you want to indicate that with your manufacturer and always speak to your manufacturer what is indeed possible. For example, in this Euro circuit website, we could either use you know, standard pooling for PCBs, but they also have a defined impedance pool, and that's what we want. For their particular website, if we click on that, we can, as usual, enter all of our PCB information. But for us, importantly, we want to look at the build up section, which happens to be this part of the site over here. We need the information for the buildup, which we then import into Altium Designer for our layer stack manager, and then we can calculate our controlled impedances. And in any case, even if we're not using controlled impedances, I think it's a good practice to import or set your PCB buildup in your ECAD tool. So for example, for this four layer board, on the right hand side, we see we have the legend or overlay, solder mask, top copper, then we have a prepreg, inner copper core, and so on. A typical four layer stack up. What we then need are the prepreg types, the thicknesses, the core types, copper thicknesses, and so on. Usually PCB manufacturers will also have some sort of impedance calculator, and if they don't, I'd highly recommend asking them for recommended trace widths for a certain stack up they can produce and what impedance profiles you can then get. For Euro circuits in this example, they happen to have an impedance calculator, which also tell you about the dielectric constants, which we can then import over to Altium Designer. As another example, Oshpark or OSH Park in the US also has a site where they tell you about their material specifications as well as their stack ups. So for us to import that into Altium Designer, I would look at the stack up section. For example, this four layer board here, again, silk screen, solder mask, copper, prepreg, and so on. We need the thicknesses and we need the dielectric constants, which are given here. And I'll show you in just a second how to import that. A final example, again, going for example, an Asian PCB manufacturer, we can navigate to their own stack up page and manufacturers will typically have their favorite producible boards for controlled impedances or what stack ups they are familiar with producing. I'd highly recommend usually going with those unless you have very specific requirements. So you can scroll down for four layer stack up. We can also adjust the thickness depending on what thickness PCB we need. And for that, again, we just read off the copper thicknesses, dielectric constants, prepreg thicknesses, and so on. Once we have that information, we've chosen our preferred manufacturer. And again, talk to our manufacturer what is possible and what requirements we have and how we can work together. Once we have that, we can go over to Altium Designer and import this information. For example, just a random project as a little demo. This is a USB hub and I would need 50 ohm single ended and 90 ohm differential pair impedance and controlled impedance traces. So I think this is a good example which we can use for, for routing and then looking at the layer stack manager. Once you've opened your PCB document in Outer Designer, I can then go to the top, go to design and then layer stack manager. And this is where we enter the information we saw from our manufacturer. This is a four layer board, but if we go to tools, presets, we have all of these various presets we can set up to 16 layers as a starting point. Typically, I'll select from this preset menu the number of layers I have on my board and then adjust everything else manually. So it's sort of the four layer preset, which is then shown here. We only have one dielectric between the top two and the bottom two layers, so I can get rid of that by right clicking and clicking delete layer. Then for example, on the left hand side, I have PCB manufacturer specifications. On the right hand side, I have Altium Designer and the layer stack manager. All I then need to do is transfer all of this data over so for example, the copper layers, they happen to be all one ounce in this configuration, but the prepreg we can see here is 0.11. So I can enter the thickness for my dielectric. And you can also see that the second dielectric is also changed 0.11. This is because we have turned on by default stack symmetry 
in our layer stack manager and typically this is a good thing to leave on because we do want a symmetrical stack up in most cases. Our core however is at 1.2 millimeters thickness so we change that millimeters and now we have to adjust the dielectric constants. You will get a nominal value for a dielectric constant of course this depends on frequency and many other factors but for a simple USB hub like this we can just take the manufacturer's nominal dielectric constant which for the prepreg is given as 4.29 so I enter that in the DK column in my layer stack manager on the right hand side. The core material for this piece of manufacture I know is about 4.6, so I'll enter that. So we started off by using a preset, then adjusted the stack up accordingly. What I also like to do is give my layers, signal layers, plane layers sensible names. So for example, top layer, I would type layer one, and typically for a four layer board, that would be my signal layer. Layer two, I'll type in, this is a ground layer. My preferred stack up is layer three ground as well. And then layer four is a signal layer again. So I'd highly suggest typing in specific layer names. Same thing goes for the prepreg or the dielectric layers. My dielectric one happens to be a 2116 type dielectric. So in my personal preference, I type in prepreg one and then the type, which is 2116. We can also use the materials tab, click on the little button here to choose the specific dielectric and Altium Designer has some inbuilt dielectrics there as well. I tend to do this manually. And then I fill in the rest of the information as well. For example, the core, so the FR4 core, and the second prepreg is 216 as well. Just to make sure, we can also export this then later in on our assembly and manufacturing documentation that we're all aligned and we can send this information to our manufacturer to really make sure we're getting the stack up that we want and that we discuss with our manufacturer. In any case, now we have our new stack up. I can press Control S to save and we can move over to our impedance calculation. Before we use Altium Designer's impedance calculation, of course, there's many different tools you can use, and I'd suggest cross-checking different tools, but more importantly, talking to your PCB manufacturer, as they will have all of the knowledge that goes into what trace widths and spacings you need for certain controlled impedance traces. Your chosen PCB manufacturer will know that best, what they can produce. They've done this many, many times before, so my first point of contact would be them, but then, of course, verifying and then entering that information in Altium Designer. For example, going back to some of these PC manufacturers, they might even have their own impedance calculators so you don't even have to send an email or call. In impedance calculator, we can choose, for example, the frequency we're running at, what characteristic impedance we need, and then, okay, we need a track width of 0.18 millimeters. For example, if we're routing as a microstrip, we can also choose a differential pair and enter information like so. For other PCB manufacturers, such as this one here, we will have to engage in a discussion. They won't provide their own impedance calculator, but you can definitely talk to them. And again, I'd strongly suggest you doing so. In any case, let's try out Altium Designer's built-in 2D field solver, which is a really powerful tool. Since we've already entered our stack up information, we can simply go to the bottom tab and click on impedance. And this opens up this impedance properties window here. I would like to add two impedance profiles. One is from MicroStrip, not coplanar and one is from microstrip but differential. So let's add an impedance profile. And we can see because we have to find two signal layers, so layer one and layer four, and two plane layers, Altium already assumes, okay, we're not gonna be routing microstrip traces or strip line traces on the inner layers because those are defined as plane layers. We're routing them on layers one and four. By default, anytime you add an impedance profile, it'll be a 50 ohm line. But if we extend this properties panel on the right hand side, we have quite a few different options. First of all is the description, and typically for example for 50 ohms I'll type in SE, so single ended 50, to give it a proper name. Then we can have impedance type single, differential, single coplanar, and differential complainer, target impedance and target tolerance. So depending on the design of course, we're just going to be looking at a 50 ohm design, let's stay with 50 ohms and 10% tolerance. Atom Designer has already estimated the track width we need or calculated it, and that's about 0.17 millimeters. To give us 50 ohms, we see deviation and we see delay times in nanoseconds per meter. So really cool information, really quickly calculated in Atom Designer. If you want a different impedance, we can just type in 40 ohms, for example, click enter, and Atom Designer instantly recalculates the trace widths. But we want 50 ohms, of course, so let's type in 50 ohms. It's now given us 0.16895, and of course, you're not gonna be able to manufacture to this kind of precision, so I always round up to about two significant figures, so 0.17, and we can see it's still very much within reason within the 50 ohms. Again, this is a calculation from a 2D field solver, 3D field solvers, there are other field solvers, and you might get variations between these different calculations. As an initial starting point, this is great. Remember, talk to your PCB manufacturer. 
I would also like a differential 90 ohm trace because I'm using USB 2 differential pairs. All I have to do is in the top left, click on add, then change my type on the right hand side to differential. I'm just gonna call this diff 90, target impedance 90 ohms with a 10 percent tolerance, press enter, and for a certain trace width and a certain trace gap, we're getting 90 ohms differential impedance. Now we've got two things to play with. One is the width and one is the trace gap. Our width predominantly determines, of course, the single ended impedance, as we just saw with the 50 ohm line, and the trace gap I then typically use to change my differential impedance. Depending on your stack up and how many different control impedance traces you have, you might need to play around with this a bit to find a happy medium. Typically, I would like to make, for USB at least, my single ended trace impedance 50 ohms as well, and from our previous calculation, we saw that this is at 0.17 millimeters. So let me type that in, 0.17 millimeters, to give us a single ended trace impedance of 50 ohms. But now we have to adjust the trace gap, this second column over here, to give us 90 ohms of differential. As you can see, the impedance is currently at 81 ohms. Now we need to space the trace gap further apart because that gives us less coupling between the traces, and thus we raise the impedance. So increasing the trace gap to 0.22 millimeters and recalculating, we get an impedance which is pretty much bang on 90 ohms, given this Simul 2D field solver. This is how I go about adding different impedance profiles to my stack up based on the stack up we imported. Again, talk to your PC manufacturer, I can't stress that enough. In any case, once we have our impedance profiles, of course we need to want to root those as well. The way we can do that is go back to our PCB design document and we can set up some design rules, for example. Top left, design, then click on rules. And for example, for differential pairs, we might have given them net classes in our schematic, which is a good idea. We go to routing and then differential pairs routing and select this rule. Now we only want to route differential pairs with a certain impedance for certain differential pairs, of course. Ethernet will be 100 ohms differential, USB 90, PCI Express might be 85 and so on. So we can create separate rules to do that. The first thing is where the object matches at the top on this panel, I will select, I want a diff class and a differential pair class I've titled as diff USB. So anything that is within that, within that class and is a differential pair will have this design rule applied to it. And for this design rule, I would like to use an impedance profile, select this, and of course you want to choose our differential 90 ohms. And this takes over the width, gap, and so on, on layers one and four. If we click okay, our design rule is now set. And this means as soon as we start routing any differential USB pair, they will be routed with our 90 ohm calculated differential or controlled impedance traces. For example, looking at this USB hub connection, this differential pair here, if I go to root at the top bar, then interactive differential pair routing, click on these and you can instantly see we're routing a differential pair. I can press space to change orientation. Let me just root it out up here, for example, right click to cancel the command. Let's check our trace widths if Alton Design is doing the right thing. Click on one of these on the right hand properties panel, you can see 0.71 millimeters trace width, which is our 50 ohm trace impedance. Control M to measure, and I'm just gonna measure between these tracks, and that's about 0.22 millimeters, which is exactly what we want. So this is now routed automatically because we set up the design rules, layer stack manager and controlled impedance profiles, this is rooted as 90 ohm differential pairs. And you can see this is a really useful tool if we have many different impedance profiles in our design and so forth. Keep in mind that layer two or the reference plane directly adjacent to it needs to be a solid, hopefully unbroken reference plane. So layer two is this plane layer underneath. Of course, this depends if you're routing your micro strip or strip line and so forth. Just as a brief example, of course, we can add other impedance profiles. If I click on add again, we could use single coplanar. If we click on the trace, we can then also select the clearance between the reference plane or the ground plane either side. We can use differential coplanar and so on. Coplanar traces I pretty much have only used in two layer boards because having a coplanar ground typically reduces my trace widths, given that two layer boards are typically fairly thick, the dielectric is fairly thick, which means you need wider controlled impedance traces. Again, as an example, I can go back to the stack up section, tools, presets, and changes into a six layer board. For example, if you want to use a strip line trace, typically layer five might be a power or ground plane, a reference plane, layer four will be your signal, and layer three might be a plane. So we want to route or calculate a controlled impedance for layer four, our strip line trace, and it's exactly as easy as it was for the micro strip. We go to impedance again, click add impedance profile, and let me just highlight one of these, which is our layer four. On layer four, this is now seen as a strip line. We can see this because the top ref, the first column here, it shows us our first reference is layer three, 
and the bottom ref is our lower reference is layer 5, with layer 4 our single layer right in the center. Again, Alton Designer has instantly calculated what trace width we need, for example, for 50 ohms, and we can type in 60 ohms and recalculate 40 ohms and so on. Again, for all the various types, differential, coplanar, and so on. Lastly, just to illustrate the point that it's important to talk to your manufacturer, I, based on, for example, their website, I would compose my stack up based on what they can manufacture, what materials they have available. Then I'd send that to the manufacturer or be in a dialogue with them to see is this producible, are the trace widths correct, should there be any adjustments made. And this is an example document I got back from my PCU manufacturer just to show what then they suggested. This was a 10 layer board. This is the stack up information loosely based on the stack up I had in mind for this particular design. So they'll send me the prepregs, the cores, copper thicknesses, and so on. But they'll also then provide you with their calculated trace widths and trace spacings. I had requirements only for 50 ohms and for 100 ohms differential, both micro strip and strip line for certain layers. And that's the information I provided them. This is in mils, not in millimeters. So these were my, my original calculations and then they will maybe adjust them a tiny bit depending on what, what materials they have available or because they just know their stack up just that bit better. They'll also give you an approximate impedance profile and so on. Some more information they'll provide is the specific trace geometry because of the etch, of course, you'll have a more trapezoidal trace, not a rectangular one, and they provide all those parameters. Those parameters, we also saw in Altium Design on the right hand side, we can see the various different trace widths, etches and so on. And just to illustrate the point that it's very important to speak to your manufacturer once again. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful and gave you some insight into the cool features Altium Designer has. Again, make sure to check out the link in the description below if you'd like to give Altium Designer a try. Make sure to subscribe to Altium Academy and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye bye. Yeah.